How's that? It's all right, I guess. You guess? But it just isn't as good as your daddy taught is that it? Well, daddy's an awful good bow tie. Well, it'll just have to do when your daddy gets here. Do you really think daddy will be able to come? Oh, of course. Dr. Christian's going to get him now. That'll be long pretty soon. Hello, Roy. Hello. Hello, Roy. Hello. Come oh. on in. Gee, Mr. Davis, is all that for the party? Sure. That's a lot. I hope it's <laughs> strawberry. No, I like chocolate. Well, go on inside. The party's in the study. We'll find out what it is soon enough. Why don't you bring that in the back way? What for? It just saves luck, isn't it? Hello, Harry. Oh, hello, Doctor. I hope you don't mind. Not at all. Go right ahead. I like having my back scratched. Thank you, Mrs. Molly. Thanks, Bob. So long, Doc. So long. Oh, hello, Dr. Christian. What can I do for you? Not a thing today. It's the other way around. I'd sure like to follow this prescription, but I'm afraid Mr. Merrill would have something to say about it. He's already said it. He gave it his official sanction. Well, what are we waiting for? <laughs> William, can you manage to fill in for Webster the rest of the afternoon? Sure, Dan. How old is Webster's daughter today? Nine. They tell me she's got quite a singing voice. For a child her age, William, it's really remarkable. Webster? Little birthday present for your daughter. Well, what's this? You should know. You see enough of them every day. Thought I'd open a little bank account for her. Thanks, Mr. Merrill. That's mighty nice of you. But well, maybe you better run along to the party before all the ice cream melts. Yeah, you shouldn't have gone to all that trouble. Nonsense. I have a weakness for birthdays. Except my own. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Merrill. Just yes. found an error in Webster's book, sir. Well, oh, Webster, ju uh, just a moment. The examiner has uncovered a $3,000 shortage and traced it to your account. Are you sure? Certainly. Let's take a look at that ledger. This entry's been altered. We know that. Something wrong? There's a shortage. It's been traced to my account. Can you explain it? I don't know anything about it. Well, couldn't it be some mistake? There could be, but there isn't. It's my business to make sure. $3,000 is missing. Seems There's nothing so. else we can do. Hello, Vicki. Hello. Come in. I... I got a telegram to deliver. Who is it for? Dr. Christian? No. For Janie. I got to deliver it right to her. Oh, well, come on right in and deliver it. Janie, dear, here's Dickie. He has a surprise for you. Hello, Dick. It's a telegram. Oh, where is it? Happy birthday to you, Jane, to you, Jane, to you, Jane. Happy birthday to you, Jane. My congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awfully pretty, Dick. Who sent it? I bet Dick did. He says you're his girl. Did you, Dick? Sure I did. See? I told you so. You shouldn't have spent all that money on me. It didn't cost me anything. Only my time. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any ice cream left? Oh, lots of it. Come on. Oh, thank you. Now, that's just the kind of a kid I'd like to have someday. Well, why wait till you have a long gray beard? The time to have children is while you're young. Oh, well, Roy's still young, isn't he? Young. He's positively infantile. Yes, sir. Dick's got the right idea. He's only ten and he's already got himself a job and a girl. All boys aren't like you, Roy. Some of them mature at a normal age. I guess I'll have some ice cream. You know, Judy, 
Sometimes I think you talk in riddles. Why don't you try solving them, Roy? It might be good practice for your detective work. Oh, I don't have to figure out anything about you, Judy. That's why I feel about you the way I do. You know, there isn't another girl in town I'd even look at. Why, Roy? That's the first really nice thing you've ever said to me. I guess I know how to treat a girl when I put my mind to it. Yes, I guess you do. Well, Bob, I've known you for 20 years. I never thought a thing like this could happen. It's as much of a surprise to me as it is to you, Johnny. You don't think Bob stole his money, do you, Ed? I don't know what to think. You feel you should go ahead and prosecute? Well, I don't want to be hard on Webster. If you confess and return the money, I'll drop the charge. I can't confess to a thing I didn't do. I'd only be branding myself a thief. Well, Bob is right. If he is innocent, that's a pretty big price to pay for his freedom. Bob, I have no alternative but to hold you for trial. Well, uh, can he be admitted to bail? I don't know why not. How much will the bond be? Oh, a thousand ought to do. We can handle that all right, Doctor. You know, of course, there's a fee of a hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. William, I'm afraid I'll have to borrow the hundred from you. Oh, all right. You're late for my party. I'm sorry, dear. I, I couldn't get here any sooner. I... My, don't you look pretty? And everybody brought me presents. Well, aren't these lovely? I wish birthdays came oftener. Oh, do you? And look what Dr. Christian sent me. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, she's the fine lady. And all these beautiful clothes. <laughs> I don't know how to how to thank you, folks. Skip the thanks, Bob. Well, it's it's mighty nice of you all. Oh, it's nothing, nothing at all. Nothing. I'd call that something. It's almost a shame to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I tried out a new recipe, and I hope it works out all right. <laughs> well, there's only one way to find out, and don't slice it too thin. Yeah, I want a great big piece. That goes for me too. Hey, you gotta blow off the candles. Look, Janie, do like this and you'll get them all out with one blow. Oh, wait. Did you make a wish? Goody, you got them all out. Now you get your wish. What did you wish for? Got a tail. Got a tail. Got a tail. Got a tail. No, I don't. It's a secret. But I'll tell Daddy. Mommy could be here. She is, darling. Our thoughts keep her with us, always. What's the matter with you kids? Has your curiosity gotten stronger than your appetites? There's a fine big cake ready to be eaten. <laughs> Trees 
We're all singing, even the breeze seems to say, you better get hip and jump into a rhythm that's red and white and blue. When you feel low, just get to winging, you can be so bright and gay. The rhythm in you beats gloom on you when the rhythm is red and white and blue. We all know how much it's worth to laugh and make our living. There's no other place on earth where they use up two Thanksgivings. The future may hold lots of changes. Things will grow old, still I say. The music forever will be new while the rhythm is red and white and blue. So you think she's good, do you think? Even better than you? Jenny's good enough to win the music contest, and I'll bet she wins it too. Sure she yeah. will. Come on, yeah. come on. There's a place where every wish comes true. It's really grand. Pixies and the gnomies wait on you, and no one tells you what to do. In the make-believe land of dreams, where the dollar bills grow on trees, silver slippers for girls to wear, golden jewels for all to share. In the make-believe land of dreams, by the peppermint-flavored trees, hear the humming of chocolate. Watch the candy tiger sneeze. Come take a trip with me tonight when you're asleep. This magic land you'll see, and lots of secrets that you must keep. There's a little old dwarf so fat. Where's a hollyhock for a hat? All your wishes come true, it seems, in make believe land of dreams. Well, Janie, it certainly was nice. Yeah, that was a cute song, boy. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks very much for the party, Dr. Christian. It was wonderful. You're welcome, darling. It was the most successful party I ever gave. I think she really enjoyed herself today. She'll come out of it all right. Sometimes I think so. Then again, like today, she smiles. It's not from her heart. Do you know what her wish was? It takes time, Bob. The loss of a mother was a pretty serious shock. Now this, this other thing had to happen. We've been friends for years, and I want to help you all I can. But first I want your word, yet you didn't take that money. You have my word. That's all I wanted to know. Now, the next step is to prove your innocence. But how? I don't know where to start. We'll have to find a way. But, Janie... Isn't it true, Mr. Webster, you have great aspirations for the musical success of your daughter? Yes, so is everyone else who knows her. And isn't it also true that a good musical education would demand the outlay of considerable money? I guess you could spend any amount on it. Then you admit you have great ambitions for your daughter, musically. Yes, I have. That is all. May it please the court. I would like to recall Dr. Christian to the stand. Doctor? Doctor, you've testified that you've known the defendant in this case for over 20 years. That's right. During the course of that time, have you ever known the defendant to be 
either extravagant or dissatisfied with his station in life? No. Bob Webster's always had a job and earned a salary. He's always had enough to live modestly, same as any of us, and to pay his debts. And would you say, Doctor, that Bob Webster is the type of a man who would steal to better his station in life, or that of his daughter? Certainly not. He would find another way, even if he had to make personal sacrifices himself. That is all, Doctor. Uh, just a moment, please. Dr. Christian, you're such a good friend of the defendant, you are undoubtedly familiar with the state of his financial affairs. No, not exactly. But uh, you do know that your friend is not, uh, shall we say, uh, prosperous? Well, there are different standards of prosperity. Here in River Sand, a man can be prosperous on very little. You haven't answered my question, Doctor. Would you call Bob Webster a prosperous man or not? Answer yes or no. Neither yes nor no is an answer. Will Your Honor please instruct the witness? The witness may phrase his reply as he sees fit. Very well, Doctor. You heard the defendant's admission that he had great ambitions for his daughter, didn't you? Yes. Then isn't it a fact that because of these ambitions, the defendant could find very good use for $3,000? I object. You object? Well, that's a new one on me. I should like to ask the court if Dr. Christian is here as a character witness or the attorney for the defense. Proceed with the matter at issue. May I ask what you object to, doctor? I object to a very capable lawyer manipulating the testimony of the witnesses for the benefit of the jury. <laughs> <laughs> certainly doesn't prove that Bob Webster stole $3,000 because he could use it. Well, I could use it. I think you could, too. <laughs> that is all, Dr. Christian. If you as a jury, by your decision, brand Bob Webster as a thief, you will be doing so purely on circumstantial evidence. His conviction on such evidence would of itself constitute a crime far greater than the one he is so unjustly charged with. The defense rests. And you have seen with your own eyes, ladies and gentlemen, the altered entry in Bob Webster's account book. As against this evidence, what has the defense produced to contradict it? Nothing whatsoever, except the uh, whimsical sentimentality of a character witness, whose sole claim is that, well, Bob Webster could not have committed this crime because he never committed a like crime before. Your own intelligence will tell you, my friends, that if it were not for the first offenders, the prisons in this country would be closed forever. State rest. Hello, Roy. How's it going? Boy, you should have heard your boss go to town for Bob. Did he tell him a thing or two? Oh, uh, I was just passing by. I thought I'd drop in. You mean you didn't drop in to see Judy? Oh, sure, that's right. I dropped in just to see Judy. Well, don't mind us. We'll go in the kitchen. Janie can help me with the dinner. That's so you and Judy can be alone. <laughs> Smart girl, that Janie. I was afraid you were going to say something in front of her. Tell me, what are Bob's chances, Roy? If Dr. Christian were only defending him, he'd be sure to go free. I'll bet the prosecutor is burning yet. I wish it were all over. But jeepers, Judy, there hasn't been as much excitement in River's End since the two-headed calf. You sound as though you enjoyed it. Well, it's a change from making prescriptions and jerking sodas. And anybody knows they can't find Bob guilty. Gee, Judy. I never saw you look like this before. You look so sweet and domestic. Thank you, Roy. Darning socks. Whose are they? Dr. Christian's. Mrs. Hastings and I have to keep an eye on him, otherwise he'd throw them out for just one little hole. You know, Judy, seeing you there like that gives me an idea. Really? What kind of an idea? Well, I was just thinking... About what? I was going to ask you something. Well, go ahead. Judy. I'm hard as nails on socks. I got a whole drawer full of them that need mending. I was wondering, would you? Bring them over sometime. Thanks, Judy. 
Roy, sometimes I wonder if I'm quite bright. Sure you are, Judy. You're wonderful. <laughs> that helps. A little. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have. The defendant will rise, face the jury. We find the defendant guilty as charged. <laughs> In view of the defendant's former standing in the community, the jury is moved to recommend clemency from the court. Your Honor, it is our intention to file an appeal. I ask that my client's bail be continued. Request granted. Thank you. Court is adjourned. And the next little girl to vie for the honor of representing River's End at the State Music Festival is little Carolyn White. Yes, yes, of course. Miss Jane Webster. to represent River's End at the state capitol is Miss Jane Webster.
you were wonderful, darling. We're so proud of you. Congratulations. <laughs> Janie, I think Judy wants to talk to you. Bob, I, I just came from the... You don't have to tell me. They denied the appeal. But why? Lack of further evidence. I told you to have that trial postponed. Bob's astrological aspects are very bad. When you get both Mars and Saturn in the ninth house, anything can happen. But will you be away a long time, Daddy? Not so very long, dear. But you're gonna like living here with Dr. Christian. Being with Judy and Mrs. Hastings. Seeing Dick every day. Why, you won't miss me at all. I'll try not to, Daddy. But I know I will. Is it business that you have to go away about? Yes, darling. Business. But St. Paul isn't so very far away, and you'll be coming there yourself pretty soon. Have you forgotten about that? And will I see you, Daddy? Will we be together then? Of course. Write me a letter telling me exactly when you come. I'll write you every, every day. And you'll write me too, won't you? I'd say I will. Maybe even twice a day. Morning and night. How would you like that? Oh, I'd like it. But where will I send my letters, Daddy? Where in St. Paul? Just give them to Roy. You know, he's the postmaster. He'll see I get them. Come on now. Give me a great big hug. <laughs> Come, darling, you're a big girl now. You're not going to cry just because your daddy has to go away for a little while, are you? Of course you're not. Every time I have to do a thing like this, I wonder why I ever campaigned for the job. Well, Sheriff, hadn't we better be getting along? Number five's always pretty much on time. Are you going to St. Paul too, Mr. Sheriff? With Daddy? Yeah, thought I'd better go along, uh, just to keep him company. Goodbye, Doctor. Thanks for everything. Goodbye, Paul. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. Be a good girl, won't you? Goodbye. Aren't you back early? Mm-hmm. I don't feel like skating. Don't you feel well, dear? I feel all right. Judy, how much longer is Daddy gonna be away? Why? I don't know, dear, exactly. You just must be patient. Look what we have here, right out of the oven. Take one quick before the doctor comes in and accuses me of spoiling your appetite for dinner. Thank you. You don't think the other children have said anything, do you? Sure, as you would have mentioned it if they had. Well, the whole thing is bad business, if you ask me. Janie, how about practicing some of your songs? You know, you've got to be in prize-winning shape for the finals of the music festival. Everybody in River's End is rooting for you to win that state scholarship. You're not going to let them down, are you? Your father wouldn't want you to, Jane. Come on. Now, let's see. Oh, I know this one.
What's the matter, dear? I don't want to sing. I don't feel like it. Now, now, Janie, you mustn't cry. Well, what's going on here, huh? What's the matter, honey? Look, I brought you a visitor. Hello. Hello. Is that for me? No. But would you like to take a walk with me while I deliver it? No, thank you. Oh, come on. It'd be nice for you. Come on. Oh. The more I see of women, the less I know about them. Come back tomorrow, Dick. You mustn't let it get you down. Oh, I won't. Better go upstairs and take a look. Well, I may not be a doctor, but I have sense enough to know when there's something wrong with a person. When a child won't eat, doesn't want to play, and pays no attention to her little boyfriend, there's something should be done about it. Morning, Miss Hastings. Morning, all right. How's Janie? Oh, not so good, but she went to school today. Hello, Doc. Hello, Roy. Oh, what's the matter? I'm afraid Janie's developing a case of neurosis. Neurosis? She's been grieving so much for her father that if he serves his full time, I don't know what will happen to her. Why, uh, Jamie, what are you doing home? <laughs> Jamie, what's the matter? Why aren't you at school? <laughs> don't send me back. Please, Dr. Christian. Don't make me go back to school. What's the matter, <laughs> honey? What's the matter, Jeannie? Hmm? What's the matter? I know why Daddy had to go away. It's because they put him in jail. <laughs> they told me so at school. They said he stole some money. I'm never going back to school again. Never, never, never. No, no, be a good girl. Don't cry anymore. Hmm? And they said worse things, too that I was an orphan, and that people had to look after me now. And they called my daddy a jailbird. You mustn't pay any attention to what the other children say. They don't really mean to hurt you. They just don't know any better. But I know daddy wouldn't steal. He didn't, did he? No, honey, of course he didn't. Well, why did they put him in jail? Listen, darling. Some people in River Sand, 12 of them, believe that your father did something wrong. And although you and I know that he didn't, they believed he did. So your father had to go away for a little while, just to satisfy those people. But he'll be back. Believe me, he will. found out about her father. The other children told her. Gee, that's tough. They've been tormenting her. The little brats. Just wait till I get my hands on them. I'm afraid it's too late to do anything about that now. Doctor, she's running a temperature, 101 and a half. Well, get her to bed and see that she keeps warm. Well, doctor, aren't you going to prescribe something for her? I wouldn't know what to prescribe. Medical science hasn't yet found a cure for a broken heart. Just the same, you cannot stand by and let that child go into a decline. We don't intend to. We've got to find a way to get Bob out of jail and bring him back here. There's not much we can do about that, Doc, outside of cooking up a jailbreak. No, I'm for that. If I thought we could get away with it. Well, I'm afraid that's out of the question. Why don't we go see the prosecutor? Maybe he could do something. Prosecutor is a practical man, lawyer. He would simply tell us to bring him the man who took the money and he let Bob go free. We know Bob didn't take it. We only know it because we feel he did. We have no proof of it. 
That's why we failed at the trial. We produced no evidence. Well, this is proof enough for me. Bob Webster was born under the sign of Jupiter. And Jupiter people esteem honor and principle above everything else. I didn't know you were such a scholar, Mrs. Hastings. Well, I'm just scholar enough to know there were several other people in that bank that could have taken that money. Oh, we went over all that before the trial. They were all investigated. Outside of the examiner and the officers of the bank, no one had access to Bob's books. I got a doc, the bank examiner. That's our man. He could take the money, all of the books, and then claim he found the alteration. Such a thing would be unheard of. It's their business to find mistakes. What about Bill Merrill? He's an officer in that bank. Oh, old man Merrill just lets him play at being vice president. He gets an office boy's salary. Well, according to the stars, Bill Merrill could stand a little investigating. See? I've made out his chart. He was born August the 10th. That's the sign of Leo. And Leo people love power and self. Why would Bill Merrill rob himself? He'll inherit the bank someday. In the meantime, what does he use for money? His father's such an old tightwad, Bill doesn't get enough money to take a girl to a movie. Churchy La Femme. Churchy La Femme, Doc. Find the woman in the case. That's who they go after when one of the big shot crooks has gotten away with a lot of dough. There it is, right there, Doc. But we're not dealing with big shots, Roy. That kind of a woman wouldn't waste her time in a little place like River Sand. And if she did, we would know it. Well, maybe she only comes out at night. This uh, churchy, or uh, whatever you call it, could be Venus. For when Neptune, which is one of Bill's signs, crosses Venus in the sixth house, that's what they call a bad aspect. Most anything is liable to happen. Maybe she's right, Doc. You know, he's been taking a lot of trips to Chicago lately, and he gets letters from Chicago with perfume on them. How do you know? Why wouldn't I know being postmaster? They smell up the whole post office. There you are, Venus. La Femme Doc, as sure as you're born. Do these letters have a return address? I don't know. I only read the postcards. Well, if we knew who the woman was, we might have something to work on. If you only knew who sent the letters. You don't have to be a detective to find that out. What do you mean? Lula Farb is the maid in the Merrill house. Ask her. Well, Lulu's a pretty good maid. She's very tight-lipped about the family affairs. Yeah, she wouldn't give you the right time. Well, when a smart young man approaches a girl in the proper manner, she's apt to tell him anything. Mm, I don't know about Lulu. I don't suppose she ever had a boyfriend of her own. Well, if she did, got away before she could put the halter on him. Roy, this may be our only chance. Do you think you could approach Lulu in the proper manner? Doc, you don't know what you're asking. It's for a good cause. But what will Judy think? She'll probably think you've gone berserk if she ever gets over the shock. One, one, two, please. A little practice along those lines won't do you any harm. Did you say Bill's birthday was the 10th of August? Why, that's tomorrow. Hello, Lulu. This is Roy Davis. Look, Roy, isn't it beautiful? The moon's coming up. Yes, sir. Coming up right over Mrs. Martin's cow shed. How can you be so unromantic at a time like this? Well, I could just sit here forever and forever to the end of eternity. Well, I hadn't counted on staying quite that long. Oh, but Lulu, I, I have been admiring you for some time at a distance. Distance makes the heart grow fonder, so the poets say. But why have you wasted so much precious time worshiping at a distance? Well, uh, you see, Lulu, it's like this. I, uh, I always figured that Bill Merrill had first call on your time. You know, being in the same house with him and everything, I just naturally thought that... Oh, Bill doesn't even notice poor little me. Is that so? I didn't think he was that dumb. That's sweet of you, Roy. But of course, Bill is really out of this world. Huh? Where is he? Away up in the clouds. She's an actress or something. She uses the most intoxicating perfume. My sin. How do you know? Have you seen her? No, but she puts it on her letters. Then Madeline put a return address on the letters? Yes, the Armor Arms, Chicago. Isn't that beautiful? Armor Arms sounds like a packing plant. 
Oh, Roy. Armor. That's French for love. Armor, arms. Arms of love. Well, I guess I gotta be going, Lulu. Oh, do you have to, Roy? Just when we've discovered we are kindred souls with our own appreciation of romance. Romance makes me hungry, Lula. Uh, tell you what, when you finish with the radio, bring it back to the drugstore and I'll make you the biggest banana split you ever ate in your life. I'll certainly take care of this for you, Mrs. Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Merrill. Let's have it. All right, here she comes. Happy birthday to you, Bill, to you, Bill, to you, Bill. Happy birthday to you, Bill. My congratulations. That's very nice. Who's it from? It's from Chicago, and it's signed Madeline Joyce. Now look, here's a quarter. You get out of here and don't deliver any more singing telegrams to me. Thank you. should have seen Bill Merrill's face when Dick told him who the telegram was from. I think they're definitely on the right track at last. Oh, Mrs. Hastings, that was a wonderful idea you gave us about the astrology. Oh, thank <laughs> you, Doctor. And by the way, the governor's office phone and says you have an appointment with the governor at 10 o'clock Saturday morning. What's our next move, Doc? I'm going to St. Paul to see what I can accomplish with the governor. You'd better take the first train for Chicago. Uh, contact the Joyce woman and Try to find out if she's been getting any money from Bill. Gee, Doc, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think I'd have much luck with a woman like... Well, the least you can do is try. Dr. Christian can't be in both places once. It all comes under the heading of research. You have already shown us that you do have a way with women. Yes, don't forget uh, Lulu. All right, I'm on my way. But remember one thing, Judy. You ask for it. I'd like to speak to Miss Madeline Joyce, please. Yes? This is Roy Davis. I know you don't know me, but I'm a friend of Bill Merrill's, and I just got into town, and... What did Bill Merrill want you to call me for? I guess he figured I'd need somebody to show me the town while I was here. You see, Bill and I are old friends, and... Uh, oh, he sure said a lot of nice things about you the last time I saw him. I'll bet he did. You're surprised? Oh, I'll bet you're just being modest. Yeah, Bill and I used to go to school together. Yeah, a long time ago. Since then, I've struck it kind of rich in oil. Thought it was kind of time to spend a little. Well, I'd certainly like to meet any friend of Bill's. Yes, that would be all right. Suppose you come about, say, about dinner time? <laughs> Madeline? Won't you come in? Well, you didn't tell me you were so handsome. Same to you and many of them. Bill said you were a looker, but he didn't go far enough. I brought these for you. Thank you. Did you say you were in the oil business, Mr. Davis? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. In River's End? No, I just dropped in there to see Bill about some investments. You know, he's the town banker. Oh, yes. Won't you sit down? Thank you. These are lovely. They're exquisite. Would you like to put them on for me, Roy?
Office of the Governor. Just a moment. Yes, sir. I have an appointment with the Governor at 10 o'clock. Your name, please? Dr. Christian. Will you be seated? Oh, but miss, it's most important. I'll tell your secretary, Mr. Redmond. Thank you. Uh, for Mr. Redmond? Yes. I don't know how I'm going to get through my work and keep all the governor's appointments, too. Why did he have to pick this morning to visit the state fair? I don't know, Mr. Redmond. No, you wouldn't. Send Mr. Jenkins in. My appointment was for 10 o'clock. I'm sorry, sir. You'll just have to wait. Miss, my appointment was for 10 o'clock. You sent my name in, but it must have gone astray. It went to Mr. Redmond. He's the governor's secretary. Is that Mr. Redmond there? Yes, it is. Uh, Mr. Redmond. Yes, yes. What is it? I've been waiting here since 10 o'clock. I'm Dr. Christian from River Sand. But my good man, this is Saturday. Lots of appointments as well as yours have had to be deferred. Oh, but mine is important. I wouldn't have waited here this long if it didn't concern a matter of life and death. Very well, Doctor, but uh, I was just leaving, so if you make it as brief as possible. I had a special appointment with the governor. I know. So did several others. Unfortunately, the governor was otherwise occupied today. And I covered all the appointments that I could. Yours, I hope to put off until Monday. Monday? Well, you might as well make it next year. I've got to see him today. That is impossible, Doctor. Well, you could tell me where I might find him, couldn't you? Then I could locate him myself. I could. Well, please. But I won't. Mr. Redmond, mine was no ordinary appointment. It doesn't concern money appropriation or politics. It does concern the life of a little girl. I explained the case in my letter to the governor. I'm sorry, Doctor, but you can't see the Governor today. Is he in town? Well, couldn't you tell me that? Then I could locate him myself. There's no use talking any further. The Governor is busy all day. A meeting this afternoon, a banquet tonight. It will have to be Monday. And now, if you'll pardon me, Doctor, I should like very much to get away. You're not going to leave this office until you try to reach the Governor. Well, tell me where he is. You admitted he was in town. Now, where is he? Get away from that door. I'm not going to leave this office until you tell me where the governor is. Or call him on the telephone. Very well. I'm sorry to have taken such means. Force and threat of any kind are not exactly in my line, but... You don't happen to know where the governor is, do you? Got me, Mr. Redmond? Yes. This man refuses to leave my office. Oh, it does, does it? Come on. Mr. Redmond, you can't do this. I am doing it. What are the charges, Mr. Redmond? He's a crank. He was on the point of attacking. Oh, assault and battery, huh? No, that's a little severe. Just lock him up till he has time to cool off. <laughs> All right, we'll just make it drunk and disorderly. But you have... A drunk doctor, eh? That's bad. Drunk as a goat, Sergeant, but you'd hardly know it. Please, Sergeant. <laughs> Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, huh? Where are you from, Doc? River's End. Well, what are you doing in the big town? I came here to see the governor. That's what he's been saying over and over. Drink sure affects some people funny. Stop this nonsense. I demand that you release me. I demand that you send someone to the governor with a message from me. 
You never think a dignified looking old gent like him would get drunk? I never was drunk in my whole life. Oh, <laughs> Doc, come here. You shouldn't try to drink the town dry the first time you step out. <laughs> <laughs> Lock him up, Mac. And Mac, keep an eye on him. He looks like a desperate character to me. No, oh, they're all alike. I never had a drink. I haven't had a drink since, since the last one. Oh. in for Bud? I don't know. It's all a terrible mistake. Sure, we're all in here by mistake. It's our own mistake for letting them dumb coppers put their hands on us. But I didn't do anything. All I wanted was to see the governor. Them coppers spoil anybody's racket. Look at me. All I wanted was to see the president of the First National Bank. Evening, Tom. Mr. Redmond back yet? In his office, sir. Thanks. Hello, Red. Hello, Governor. Have a busy day? Oh, I should say. It's my speech for tonight. Yeah, it must be. Fellow citizens and taxpayers. It's already except for reference to the foreign situation. Who do you want to quote? Washington, Monroe, or Roosevelt? <laughs> Who do you think? How'd you make out your golf match today? Well, some crank barged in just before I left and got nasty when he couldn't see you. Crank, eh? Yes. Threw me completely off my game. Oh, that's too bad. Who was he? Oh, Dr. Christian. Christian? Did you take care of him? <laughs> Quite. He's in jail. What? But I had to do something to get rid of him. He actually threatened me. Oh, Redmond, will I ever make a politician out of you? Dr. Christian in jail. Hello, get me the district police, please. Front Precinct Police Station. Hello, uh, this is the governor talking. This is the president of the United States. Oh, you yeah, go. This is the governor speaking. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, governor. Dr. Christian. Oh, yes, we have. Yes, right away. Of course, governor. Yes, your excellency. Hey, man, let Dr. Christian out. Dr. Christian, Tom. How do you know? What do you know? The governor does want to see that Dr. Christian. Oh, doctor, there's been a terrible mistake. I hope you won't hold us responsible, doctor. I knew you weren't to lunch the minute I laid eyes on you. It's all right, gentlemen. Now, if you'll just direct me back to the Capitol buildings. Oh, it's just a few blocks, two down and three across. What you are you talking about? Get him a police car and a motorcycle escort. No, thank you. That won't be necessary. Goodbye. If it were not an emergency, I wouldn't have come here tonight, gentlemen. Child is dying of something you don't hear about very often, but which happens lots of times. Dying of a broken heart. I may sound emotional, but believe me, it's true. The ultra medical skill suffice to save the child's life, Doctor. This is a case where medicine won't help. The only chance the child has is for you to grant her father a temporary parole. Well, that I can't do. I'd just simply issue a parole without at least reviewing the case. No, Doctor, it would set a, a dangerous precedent. But Governor, we are on the track of new evidence that makes it almost certain another person is guilty. Well, then the solution will be simple. When you get your evidence, appeal the case through the courts. Oh, that takes time. Maybe weeks, Governor, and then it would be too late. Probably the banquet committee we're late. Hello? Long distance for home? Oh, Dr. Christian. Just a moment, please. Thank you. Hello? Yes, Judy. Yes? Well, listen to me carefully. Try using glucose injections intravenously. Yes, and continue till I get there. I'll be back as soon as I can. And I'm going to bring her father with me if it's humanly possible. Bye. 
The child's condition is even more dangerous now than when I left her. She needs her father. He's the only one who can save her. But good heavens, Doctor, you... you haven't given me any actual proof of this man's innocence. Governor, I'm not asking you to pardon him or to reverse any decisions. That can come later when we have the actual proof. All I'm asking now is for you to release Bob Webster for a few days, even 48 hours. I'll be responsible for him, or you can send an officer along with him. Governor, you should get Dr. Christian to write your speeches. She's even got me on his side now. I'm afraid you've got to give him what he wants. Thank you, Mr. Whitman. Hello. Up. Oh. All right. Governor, they say the soup's getting cold at the banquet. Oh, let it freeze over. Come with me, Dr. Christian. Do you think you're going to be well enough to come to St. Paul with Dr. Christian for the concert? Oh, I feel wonderful now, Daddy. As if I hadn't been sick at all. Well, you're still a pretty weak little girl. You know, you've got to be good and strong to take part in that big music festival. Will you be there to hear me sing, Daddy? I'm going to try, darling. I, I'm pretty sure that uh, Dr. Christian will be able to arrange it. Mr. Hampton be there with you? Well, you don't think I'd miss it, do you? After I've heard what a fine singer you are? I wish you didn't have to go back to St. Paul. Don't you worry about that. You just hurry up and get well so you'll be in good voice for the country. As soon as you get there, hold tight to the doctor's hand, Danny. Oh, we're going to be awfully lonesome until you get back. And we'll get the concert on the radio. Dr. Christian! Yes? Another telegram for you. And these are for you. Thank you. I'll wear them at the concert. I hope they last that long. Don't worry, Doctor. Go on to St. Paul. And if we hear anything more from Roy, outside of how he's progressing, we'll let you know. I'm afraid Roy has been lost to the cause. Hi. Why, it's Roy. Hi, Judy. Well, did you finally finish your research work? Well, a man has to be thorough in such matters. Rome wasn't made in a day, you know. Where's Dr. Christian? Have I got important information? Dr. Christian's in St. Paul with Jane. What kind of information? Just what the doctor ordered. She was holding them over his head. My sin. Look here, Roy Davis. I could overlook your carrying on with Lulu because I know her. But this other woman is something entirely different. Can't discuss it with you now, Judy. I got an important call to make. Can I help it if I have a way with women? 894, please. Roy Davis, if this is another woman you're calling, everything between us is off. State Bank? Uh, connect me with Bill Merrill, Jr., please. Judy, go sit down someplace, will you? I'll take care of what's between us later. Hello, Bill. This is Roy Davis. If you're not too busy, I'd like to come over and have a little talk. <laughs> Our next 
next contestant, ladies and gentlemen, will be uh, Miss Jane Webster from River's End.